Hello gentlemen, welcome to our tutorial on stoichiometry. In our first part, we're going to go from moles to particles. We've done this in class, but here are some example problems. When we go from moles to particles or particles to moles, we use Avogadro's number, which states the relationship between particles and moles. It says that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles for every one mole of particles. And again, a particle can be classified as an atom, a formula unit, a molecule, or an ion. Let's look at our first example. How many molecules are in 0.443 moles of nitrogen dioxide? So when we approach this problem, first thing we do is put what we're given. We're given 0.443 moles of nitrogen dioxide. We're going to put this in our bracket system so we can use dimensional analysis to solve. Now what relates moles and molecules, because we're going from moles to molecules, is this relationship there. Molecules is a particle. So I put this in here. I want to put moles on the bottom, so I put Avogadro's number on top. Molecules of NO2 for every one mole of NO2. I put moles of NO2 on the bottom so that moles over here cancel out. Now I simply multiply across and divide by one to keep it the same. This equals 2.67 times 10 to the 23rd. This is molecules of NO2. 2.67 is accounting for my three significant figures given to me here and here. So three significant figures. That is moles to molecules. The other way around. Example two. How many moles of copper are in 4.5 times 10 to the 21st atoms of copper? So I know I'm off the screen now, but if you can just listen to my voice. So I'm starting with atoms and I'm going to moles. So the first thing I do is put what I'm giving. 4.5 times 10 to the 21st atoms of copper. I put that in my bracket system. I want to get rid of atoms of copper, so again, atoms is a particle. Particles always goes with Avogadro's number. Therefore, on the bottom, we put Avogadro's number. And it's atoms of copper for every one mole of copper that we have. Atoms of copper cancels. And I'm simply left with multiplication. I'm sorry, division. 4.5 times 10 to the 21st times one mole divided by Avogadro's number equals, and I write it down here, a much smaller number, of course. It's going to be 0 0.0074 moles of copper. In each case, these are my final answers. That's going from moles to particles. Now, today we learned something a little different. Oh, yikes. If I go from moles to mass, I use the molar mass. We learned that today as well. It's a different type of transition. The molar mass says that for every one mole, it's a certain mass in grams. And we usually go to the periodic table for this. So we go to the periodic table to find the molar mass. Our first example says, calculate the number of moles and 15.5 grams of potassium sulfate. So the first thing I do is start off with what I'm giving. 15.5 grams of potassium sulfate, if you remember, Potassium, K plus, sulfate, SO4, 2 minus, crisscross applesauce, we get K2SO4. Put that in my brackets. Now, to go from grams to moles, I need to know the molar mass. The molar mass of potassium sulfate is adding up the mass of each individual atom from the periodic table, the atomic mass. The mass of this is... 174.2592 grams per mole. I put grams on the bottom here because I want grams to cancel out. And remember, grams is always associated with my mass here. And this is grams of potassium sulfate. And moles of potassium sulfate. My grams cancel out. 15.5 times 1. 15.5 divided by 174.2592, 
equals 0 0.0889 moles of K2SO4. Zero point zero eight eight nine moles of K2SO4. That's going from grams to moles. Now let's look at going from moles to grams. What is the mass of 0.3 moles of carbon tetrachloride? So the first thing we do is start with 0 0.30 moles. Carbon tetrachloride is carbon tetra, meaning four chlorines. So we have one carbon four chlorines. That's our formula. Now knowing our formula, we can get our molar mass. We need the molar mass to go from moles to grams. That's the conversion we use here. So I add up the mass of carbon and the mass of four chlorine atoms from the periodic table. And for carbon tetrachloride, my molar mass is 153.8227. Per one mole. I put moles on the bottom here because I want moles of carbon tetrachloride to cancel out. So it's moles of carbon tetrachloride and grams of carbon tetrachloride. My moles cancel out at 0.3 times 153.8227 grams and that gives me 46 grams of carbon tetrachloride. It's 46 due to significant figures. I have two there. That is my final answer. Now, we can put these two concepts together, going from moles to particles, and then moles to mass. We do that together, and it looks like this. I can go from mass to moles, and moles to particles. It's a two-step process, but I'm using both the tools that I just learned. I go from mass to moles using the molar mass. I go from moles to particles using Avogadro's number. Now, this question reads this. How many formula units are there in 30 grams of strontium nitride? Now, I start off the same way. What, with what I'm given. I'm given 30 grams strontium nitride. Now, from a given mass, I want to go to moles in order to get to particles, which is a formula unit. So to go to moles, I go to moles through the molar mass. So the molar mass of strontium nitride, I calculate that using the periodic table. And this, the molar mass of strontium nitride comes out to 290.8734 grams for every one mole. This is a heavy one. That is strontium nitride. Now, my grams of strontium nitride cancel out, and I'm left with moles of strontium nitride. But I don't want to stop at moles. I want to get to particles. Thus, I'm going to add another bracket. As I add another bracket here, now I'm going to incorporate Avogadro's number to get from moles to particles. So I have moles on top here. Now I want to get moles on the bottom diagonal to cancel. So moles of strontium nitride and Avogadro's number goes out here on top. And this is formula units of strontium nitride. So now my moles of strontium nitride cancel out, and I'm left with the problem here. Now that I have formula units of strontium nitride, which is what I wanted in my problem here, I can solve equals, now I multiply on the top, 30 times 1 times Avogadro's number. Then I divide by what's in the denominator, 290.8734 divided by 1 and 1. So once I do that, what I get is, sorry, 6.21 times 10 to the 22nd 
its formula units of strontium nitride. Gentlemen, I hope this helped. Review this. Get this right. Peace.